Hey everybody, Scout Crafter here again. It's Wednesday, and uh, you probably noticed something different. I'm wearing glasses. I'll tell you why in a minute, but we have some big announcements. We have a great show planned, so let's get downstairs and get started right hey, away. we're down the shop, and uh, you're probably wondering what the big announcement is. Well, this Saturday, the 15th of May, 2021 is Jacktown Steam and Tractor Show in Pennsylvania, Bangor, Pennsylvania. I'll have a link to that at the end or in the description. Uh, fantastic show. We're going to have a meet up there. And uh, everybody, if you're within two hours, it takes me about an hour and 45 minutes to get to Jacktown from my house. If you're within two hours of, uh, of Bangor, Pennsylvania, it is without a doubt worth going because it's a fantastic show and and uh you've seen it before in some of my videos and it's just what what a great show and it, i promise you'll be worth your time now there is a threat of uh, slight rain or so it's a rain or shine show and uh you will have a great time regardless but we're gonna have a meet up we'll be at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning now you should get there early i'm gonna be getting there well before eight o'clock in the morning but uh, you should get there early if you can and uh, check out the flea market because the early bird does get indeed the worm and um, so when you go there uh, you can go check out the flea market things like that there's lots of exhibitions to see you'll meet some famous YouTube personalities like 805 Road King 357 Magdad um, you see Mike uh, small engine Mike generator Mike uh, you know, uh, there's so many guys you're going to meet there. It's just a fantastic time. So we're going to meet up at the gazebo. And you're probably saying, where's the gazebo? You can't miss it when you walk in there. It's kind of in the middle of things. So we're going to meet up at the gazebo at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. We'll be meeting up there. And uh, just uh, if you are in the area or you can make it or something, I promise you, you'll have a good time. Uh, with that, I got a couple things to talk about. You're probably wondering why I had glasses on. <laughs> in the beginning of the uh, intro and that's because I do wear I don't have to wear glasses but if I want to see I have to wear glasses so um I, I do wear glasses so that's why sometimes people like when we've had these meetups before they see me and they go I don't know is that they because everybody looks different in person than they do on video and they go, I don't know is that him but I do wear glasses so that's what I'll look like I'll probably be wearing red of some sort um, and I definitely will have a red backpack on if, if you see when I'm in the flea market, I always have my red backpack on. And, uh, so if you see me come up, please say hello. And, uh, I, I'm promise you'll have a good time. But, uh, speaking of good times, I was at, uh, elephant trunk flea market again. I just want to talk real quick. We're not going to go through it because you've seen my flea market tours before, but I picked up some great stuff. And uh, I, I left some stuff behind that I'm not regretting, but I just wish I wish I had more room to buy everything I wanted to get. But let me show you some of the highlights, some of the things that I wish I could have picked up or uh, just enjoyed seeing, and maybe you would too. Okay, now uh, you know I find all kinds of things interesting. I always found vintage baby carriages interesting. Look at this. This was a Woody from the 50s. How cool is that? Especially all varnished up. And then, uh, again, I found some older skateboards, but these here were from, like, the late 90s. But uh, I like this one here, this uh, wet willy on the, <laughs> the clear plastic, just nice. And then typewriters. Typewriters are making a big comeback in the collector area. And what's so interesting about this one, did you know that keyboards were different from ancient and antique uh, typewriters? We're used to what's called a QWERTY because of the top letters on the uh, uppercase uh, QWERTY style, but uh, there was also a uh, Dvorak uh, style, and there was many other styles of, uh, of typewriters, so it can be confusing. And you can see the one that I saw here at the show has a, a one that I'm, I'm not familiar with. Uh, also, you know, I like old signage. Look at this here. Look at this cool flypaper sign. Here's something that, you know, you don't see too often. And this guy had a bunch of different signs, and, and uh, look at that old sunglass uh display and they also had this uh, cool tire uh, display again these are sheet metal signs I always love these but the one thing that I passed up which I really I, I was gonna buy I went back for it was this and this is called it was an, an Irish mail car 
Uh, it was a hand car that the boys would pull and sit on and it had a chain drive. And these were big in the 50s and the 60s. And uh, this one was all metal. And they had so many great things for kids back then to, uh, to go outside and play using your, uh, your hands and your exercise and things like that. And this car... Uh, was in decent shape. It had very little rust. It was a California car, and look at the tires are in condition. I and he wanted sixty bucks. So I should have bought see, it. See, I enjoy going there just to look at all the cool stuff that they have there, and and I can you know reminisce and have a great time just walking around. But I did pick up a few things, and let me show you what I did pick up. Okay, I must have a bunch of these wood augers, you know, the type they come with the handle attached to the auger bit, but this one was a little bit different. This one looked like something you might see in a, a winery or something for wine barrels. It's definitely of a higher quality. It has some nice patina on it. Pick that up. Then I picked up some, of course, glass insulators, and these are common ones, you know. Um, you don't, you see these often, the green ones and, the, is, but if there's no chips, no flea bites, this Hemingway number 40, if you see one of these and they're cheap enough for a couple dollars, pick them up. They're always nice to have. Uh, I like pressed glass, always have it's something about it. I just think it's so elegant. So again, for a couple dollars, you pick that up. And then, you know, the tools that I get from the boxes here, these, uh, these regular, look how thin this Billings is, you know. You don't usually see the thin style around. And uh, and then I picked up these auto wrenches. Uh, of course, I'm not going to pass by a Ford USA auto wrench for $2, right? I mean, I'd be out of my mind, especially when it's in nice shape. But this one here was very unusual. I have not seen this before because if you notice those two rivets below and above the turn screw, never seen that before. And yet it's not like a, you know, sheet metal turned around there. I don't know. I got to look and see if uh, I can pick up a name. The only thing on here on the bottom, it says nine inch auto, which, you know, uh, Velcheck used to put that, but I know this ain't a Velcheck. I don't think it is. So, and then last off, we have a nice old channel lock. Now I saved my uh, best two purchases for last Let's go check these out. I got some good buys. Look at this. Okay, next up, uh, I was getting near the end of the day, and I happened to see this lantern on a, a lady's table, and I said, oh, I, I, this is my favorite lantern, you know, this uh, Emberry Air Pilot. However, this one here is made by Elgin. You could see Elgin, but the this was made by Emberry for Elgin, uh, which I think was Sears, and it, it was made between 1939 and 53. had kind of an Art Deco style. Uh, it had a, a, a heavy sheet made uh gauge steel and it was really these were well-made lanterns you know a little bit heavier than uh than most lanterns the deeds and everything to carry but uh, you know that's why they're bulletproof and and anybody who has one of these loves them i love the art deco style the air tubes the way they are and um but the first thing you have to look at when you're looking to buy a lantern is you turn it upside down and you look over here for any pinholes or any repairs. Or, this thing's in mint condition. I'm saying, and it looks like it might have been a repainted at one point or another. But, you know, and then you lift this up to see, you know, what kind of, uh, when you lift up here, you could see if there's any uh, overspray or anything. And I, I don't see it. I'm saying, boy, this looks really I'm like a nice lantern. So the lady said to me, before I even said anything to her, she goes, five dollars. So... <laughs> five dollars are you kidding me you can't get the uh the cap for five dollars of course i'm gonna take that but uh you know i took i take it for parts or anything so i of course i i bought it but now you have to look inside the fount to see if there's any rust or anything so you know the cap comes off nice and easy uh, an initial look in here is it looks really nice but let's get our uh, inspection camera that uh, Randy Richard turned me on to and see what's inside there. Okay, you can see here we have our endoscope here, which uh, I'm going to move this over so you can see a little better. And uh, what this is, you can see it's a uh, it's a regular endoscope and, and it has a, a light on the end and two different types and we're going to turn it on here. Got to hold it down for a second. And it runs through. Now you have it starts off with a light in the top here, and you could toggle it to have a light on the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it through here. Okay, you could see us here. You could see the camera. Okay, <laughs> here's the camera we're filming. Okay, uh, this is me. Now let's go inside the tank here. You see the hole in the tank, and this is how we could tell how this is. And you could see 
when we look in here, let me see, I got a little bit of a glare on this light. There we go. All right, when we look in here, uh, you can see that it looks really good. I'll go around the seam here. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to toggle this to turn it to the side view. But you can see we have no rust, no rust around the edges. Now, when I toggle this switch, instead of being on the outside, it'll be on the side, you see? push this button and now I have the light coming out the side now I could just push it right into the tank like this and look around the seams like that so let's take a look over here now we're looking this is actually looking at the top of uh, that's where the wick would come out of you could see there and 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 here's the sides and you could see and look at that look how pretty and look how beautiful I'm gonna raise it up here for you Look how beautiful the inside of that tank is. There's no rust whatsoever. How often do you find that? You know, there's a, a little spot there, but nothing that would come out. Uh, just beautiful. And you turn this whole thing around, there's another little spot there. And uh, But overall, this is a beautiful, beautiful condition. You never see the inside of a fountain look that clean so there we have it a nice little five dollar lantern that's in good shape i know my buddies uh ken and and ray o rob would have uh snatched this up in a second for five dollars right it's always this it's nice if you like lanterns and you come across a deal like this especially this is one of my favorite you know you can't help but uh, be grinning ear to ear the rest of the day let me show you my all-time best purchase that i got from okay the show. my favorite purchase for the day was this vintage 1920s to 1930s Excel light. And this was a portable marine lantern. <laughs> and look how cool this is, okay? First, let me show you some of the awesome things about it. Look, it's got a leather handle. And let me bring you in Like closer. I said, it's got the original leather handle, which you don't see too often. Here is the, the tag on it. It says Excel light. And they were made out of Forestville, Connecticut. And uh, they, I heard they were also made out of New York, but uh, the National Marine Lamp Company. And this now, this remember, this is like going on 100 years old, this lantern. Cast aluminum, right? And uh, what's so cool, a glass lens. You can see the bulb in here is detached from here. But uh, we'll replace the bulb. I'm, I want to kind of get this restored and working. Now, the reason I was looking at it, and the guy I bought it from is a real cool guy. He has a bunch of great stuff. And... Uh, I'm looking at this and I go, this is cool. He goes, yeah. He goes, you know, I was thinking how great would that look? Cause it's, it's aluminum. If it was like polished, I said, that's exactly what I was thinking. Now these would come and I've seen a couple of pictures. They came with like a bronze colored paint on there. And, um, and this one here is no exception had that same bronze colored paint, but it's all but gone now. And, uh, you can see here, this, this mechanism here is you loosen this up like this this little knurled knob, and then this pulls in and out, which adjusts the bulb. Watch, see the, the bulb housing, the, uh, there, look in there, and you can see it pushes in and out the socket, and that would give you focus ability, and then you would tighten this down, and it would lock it in. <sighs> look at that genius. Here's the switch on, off, just to push, uh, I'm sure it's a simple switch in there. Um, to access the bulb, you, uh, you would raise this up like this again 100 years old look at look at that and the chicken wire i know right now all of you saying how cool chicken wire it's it's in the glass so it's not like it's uh remember the old glass and well i went to catholic school and I, a lot of the glass had this in here that it's you can't feel it. it's 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 in the glass so chicken wire in the glass uh I'm, I want to do, what do you think? You think I should do a, a nice restoration on this? Let me know in the comments because this thing is just screaming to be restored. And it ran off of two of those, do you remember those tall volt and a half dry cells from back then? Remember when batteries were young, they didn't have, you know, uh, too many types. It ran off of those tall batteries and uh you can see here it's got the copper contacts this is like original you can't get those batteries anymore and if you could you wouldn't want to use them anywhere they're so expensive uh but this i think was the bases you know the caps for those batteries and went in the bottom somebody must have i think at one time tried to convert it to a different style of battery and i don't know what these are 
these cardboard, you know, I think they did that to uh, take up the space because those volt and a half dry cells were very long, remember? So they must have tried to do it with a six volt cam battery or whatever the case may be. But what do you think? You Would you like to see this restored? How cool is that light? Wow, that was a fast 15 minutes. And <laughs> So uh, in closing, we got to wrap this up because I'm running a bit late on here. But uh, uh, a couple people were asking me about my cat, Teddy. You know, Teddy was a little kitten that I featured on some of the earlier videos, you know, when he was a little guy and he was uh, he was born under my porch. He was uh, abandoned by the mother and uh, because uh, I don't think he had a bowel movement. And believe it or not, they abandon kittens if they think they're constipated, there's something wrong with them. But I took him in and I massaged his little belly until he had a poop. <laughs> and then uh, I fed him high protein and X's. Now I want to sh take a look at what Teddy looks you know, some like. Some of now. you were asking, remember pipes? Well, some of you were asking about Teddy. And this is Teddy, little Teddy. He's bigger than his brother pipes now. Look at him. There's pipes and here's Teddy. Remember that little kitten that was around the porch? Well, there he is. He's all grown up and this is, he's only been out a couple times. His senses are overloaded by all the bird sounds and the wind. So, but uh, after a while, he likes to play with his brother. They're great, aren't they? Pipes and Teddy. So it turns out the little runt of a kitten got bigger than the rest of his siblings. And, uh, Anyway, uh, don't forget about Jacktown on Saturday, and I uh, hope I can see you there. And Friday, we'll have a little bit more talk about it. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye. All right. Once again, everybody say patina. Patina. <laughs>